अब रक्षा मंत्री राजनाथ सिंह नेशनल डिफेंस अकेडमी के सातवें दीक्षांत सार को संबोधित कर रहे हैं पहले सीधे आइए चलते हैं वहां पर falls in the area of internal security but at times it comes to light that training funding and armed support of such organizations is being done from outside the country incidents of cross border infiltration and cross border terrorism are seen which are classified in the category of external security and now we are facing such security threats which fall into the category of non kinetic and non contact warfare cyber warfare and information warfare are such security threats the vulnerability of the critical infrastructure to cyber attacks has become a big concern critical infrastructure like power generation and distribution is increasingly becoming more complex and reliant on networks of connected devices just a few decades ago power grids and other critical infrastructure operated in isolation now they are far more interconnected both in terms of geography and across sectors the energy sector is one of the main targets of the cyber attacks against critical infrastructure but it is not the only one transport public sector services telecommunications and the critical manufacturing industry are also vulnerable friends our increasingly interconnected financial system are also at a great risk you all must be aware that in february 2016 hackers targeted the central bank of bangladesh and tried to steal 1 billion dollars while most transactions were blocked 101 million dollars is still disappeared this was a wake up call for the finance world that cyber risk in the financial system had been severely underestimated today the assessment that a major cyber attack poses a threat to financial stability is not a question of if but when friends likewise information war has the potential to threaten our political stability there is no account of how much fake news and hate material is likely to be brought in the society through social media platforms the organized use of social media and other online content generation performs is the being used for engineering the opinion or perspective of the masses the deployment of information war was most evident in the ongoing conflict between russia and ukraine throughout the conflict social media has served as a battleground for both sides to spread competing narrative about the war and the portray the conflict in their own terms the propaganda campaigns as a means of a strategy to sh shape narratives are by no means new during warfare but its reach has increased by leaps and bounds due to the shift forward social media as the primary distribution channel friends another case in point is the role of the cambridge analytica in the us presidential elections of 2016 which revealed how the social media platforms created a connect us had been weaponized to influence free and fair elections around the world india with millions of whatsapp and the facebook users and on various other social media platforms has a big reason to be cautious now the real question is if there are so grave security challenges evolving before us how we counter them the answer according to me lies in the working towards shared and the collective responsibility of the community of civilized nations martin luther king junior one said that injustice anywhere is a threat to justice everywhere in this era of high connectivity and interdependence the statement holds more relevance than ever when peace and security of any region is threatened the entire world feels its impact in multiple ways 
The recent Ukrainian conflict showed how its ripple effects could adversely impact the whole world. Together, Russia and Ukraine export nearly a third of the world's wheat and barley. But this conflict had prevented grain from leaving the black pasture of the world and led to the food crisis in various African and Asian countries. This conflict has also fueled an energy crisis in the world. In Europe, oil and gas supply has been dwindling. India has also been affected as the Russia-Ukraine war led to the disruption in international energy supply, making the energy import much more expensive. Friends, if security becomes a truly collective enterprise, then we can think of creating a global order which is beneficial to all of us. The global community has been working towards it and there exists a lot of multilateral organizations working in the field of security like United Nations Security Council. And what we now require is to elevate it to a level of shared interest and shared security for all. Some may argue that it is a utopian dream. To this, I would say that we have recently achieved it in a particular case of COVID-19. The recent global response to the COVID pandemic highlighted the urgent requirement of the multinational collaboration in information sharing, situational analysis, as also research, development and production of the vaccine. This was an important lesson for the world and it highlighted the need for greater understanding, connect and the cooperative initiatives between institutes and organizations within and across nations in handling issues of national and international security. The pandemic also gave a chance to us as a country to put into practice our deeply held belief of Basudhaiva Kutumbakam when we initiated landmark initiatives such as Operation Samudra Setu and Vaccine Maitri. The impact of these initiatives initiative has been very much visible in our bilateral relations with countries in the neighborhood and beyond. Friends, recently we have also been imposing the idea of the multi-alignment. We believe in a multi-aligned policy which is real realized through diverse engagements with the multiple stakeholders so that views and concerns of all can be discussed and addressed for a prosperous future of all. This is the only way that can lead to shared responsibility and the prosperity. I would like to share another related issue in this security paradigm that is not to consider national security as a zero-sum game. We should strive to create a win-win situation for all. We should not be guided by narrow self-interest which is not beneficial in the long run, but by enlightened self-interest, which is sustainable and resilient to shocks. A strong and prosperous India would not be built at the cost of the others. Rather, India is here to help other nations realize their full potential. Friends, in a similar way, I would like to tell you that conduct of our strategic policy should be moral. India does not believe in a world order where few are considered superior to others. India's actions are guided by the very essence of human equality and dignity, which is a part of our ancient ethos and its strong moral foundations give us our political strength. Even our freedom struggle was based on the bedrock of high moral values. I would like to quote Mahatma Gandhi. आप सुन रहे थे रक्षा मंत्री राजनाथ सिंह को जो कि नेशनल डिफेंस कॉलेज के साठवें दीक्षांत समारोह को संबोधित कर रहे थे उन्होंने साफ तौर पर कहा कि जो साइबर वॉर है वो सबसे बड़ा सुरक्षा है अगर हम आज के इस युग का जिक्र करें